Welcome to Biomutant. Biomutant is weird. Biomutant is wonderful. It is a mismatch of a million different things that somehow come together to work in this bonkers, bizarre, and beautiful world. But first, we must sneak up on this really freaky little rodent man. Boo! What? What the fuck? Oh yes, everybody, welcome to Biomutant, a game filled with... Basically, if you could think about it, then it's probably in this game. Chiefly, though, that I care about is the monsters. There is big behemoth beast that you take down. Hell, there is even a character who teaches you how to be a monster hunter. And that is just absolutely charming. But there's Breath of the Wild vibes. There's somehow Arkham combat notes. It's got kung fu in spades it's got this just real unique flavor uh, that just kind of works there's a bit of clunkiness a bit rough around the edges perhaps one too many systems but there is just so much to dig down into and it really kind of comes together as you get into it and honestly becomes very very compelling a big thank you to uh, THQ for letting us jump in and get to grips with it early for you guys. And for now, let's start off rather simple and easy, because honestly, this is a game that is best explained by, hey, just... Just watch how it plays out for a bit. Enjoy this, the first 45 minutes or so. Not my first playthrough, this is a second save now that I know what I'm doing, so you can get an idea for how it looks when you are, you know, aware of things. And then at the very end, I will also put in a fight with one of the World Eaters, the big monster bosses, the very earliest one that you do after a couple hours, so nothing too spoilery, but I will let you know before it simply pops up. And until then, well... Enjoy! Do you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the predator only grew stronger. for it. This is not the time nor place to end this story. This time, it was best to run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. The Predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the Tree of Life started to die.
The oil sludges everywhere. To most, it only means death, but some have adapted to the new environment and changed with it. Evolution has its ways. Look, an emergency box from the once was. A rare sight. That pipe looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. Whoa! It's time to find a way out of this place. No, really, I mean it. The Morks produce biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress. Blobs that affect the cellular coding strands of any living being when absorbed, including you.
Toxanol built vessels called arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single arc they left behind that we know other arcs traveled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxanol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste, and without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. of spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. There you go. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. You're empty of key. Made the kill. Smash me, Dash. That's the last of them. Let's talk to the wheeled one before backup arrives. He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then. The night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed Ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. 
Kim Hobe, Bekuku, Ifad, Muk. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. To why a bubuku dunu? It's a scar you're covering under that eye patch, isn't it? But he would have recognized you anyways. You look exactly like your Muma. There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Looper Lupin did to your village, your Muma and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. Come, Reaper. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Moomer's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. The impending threat of the World Eaters bringing down the Tree of Life is ever so close. He also worries about the Jagni tribe that's actively working for a doomsday and purging of the world. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. <laughs> You're such a good child, so you probably did. Even the young forget. <laughs> He understands why you came all the way out here, to see them, the Potato People. The Potato People, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. You might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. You found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. The Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. Only time will tell. At least his intention is to dedicate his life to it. He has the feeling the fate of the world depends on it. <laughs> You'll need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. <laughs> You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of Ki, the primal energy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
the bed. You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. Bed, turn, and a bed. <laughs> He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. <laughs> oh, it'll need a continuous flux of key over the 20, 12 months to come, so... Countless, he'd say. Bed, turn, and a bed. <laughs> One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. <laughs> but today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Mooma will be able to protect us. You can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. He says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Mooma comes looking for you. You did good here today. No, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. He lost you there for a while. But no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the tree of life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the world eaters arrived. The genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse the Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land set the World Eater's DNA into overdrive. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mekton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the murk puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the northwest route. Noko has tamed the midget and is preparing to take on the hoof puff at the end of the east route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. The water. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. 
His friends have prepared something specific for each world eater. The Mekton, the Octopod, the Majut, and the Googlide are almost ready to ride. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. You're getting the hang of it. Quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. Know that the tree of life is dying. Its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. A signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. Let's see. be the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. The world eaters have made their marks on our world over time. That's not the first nor the last village it'll leave in its wake. Look, a survivor. Glad to see someone made it out alive. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the World Eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. He worries there won't be much left to save if this continues, even if the Tree of Life survives the attack. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be judged, not by your intentions. He's grateful for that. You still seem to have a spark of light in you. What's there to like about light? It hurts to look at. Not as much as it hurts to look at you. Always making this personal. And you're always trying to pretend it's not. There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. 
Out of Date says you will make a better stand against the World Eaters with the support of a tribe, and there are two nearby. The Myriad tribe is likely to be a good match as they act on the understanding of the greater good and have a code of honor. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jagni tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the world eaters bring down the tree of life. But siding with Jagni isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. Out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagni's or Myriad's side. He believes the tribe Sifus, Myriad especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. He can sense you share Myriad's view on the world. The Myriad would embrace someone willing to fight against the tyranny of the Jagni. Out of date will be waiting for you beneath the Tree of Life if you lose track of what you need to do. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. Another fork in the road. It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What will it be? It's unusual that natural tunnels like this still exist. Most of them got flooded. This area was beautiful before the tribe war began. Look at it now, it's a war zone.
That's the Myriad Tribe's fortress. Will they be friends or foe? You should head up there. That way you'll know. Let's see. It's a beaten path to that door. If you go there, you'd better make an entrance. Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. They don't just let anyone see the Sifu, but there's something different about you. The Myriad tribe act on understanding of the greater good and a code of honor. They believe uniting the tribes is the only way to restore the peace. The Sifu is convinced that defeating the World Eaters and saving the Tree of Life is the only way to make the world a better place. He welcomes you to the Myriad Fort and introduces himself as the tribe's Sifu. But he was hoping you'd show up. The news of a vigilante ronin on crusade crossing the Great Wall through the crack in Bunker 101 has preceded you. He heard you took out of date side against the scavengers in Bunker 101. It seems you believe in helping your next. And that's something you have in common. He's convinced you've returned for a reason, and is glad you chose to come here. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. The Sifu says sometimes one memory can make another come to life. He hasn't thought about your Muma for ages, even though she taught him a lot. He was one of the original Wang Fu disciples. Your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it consisted of unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. The Sifu says it's time to set the past aside, at least for now. Unrest is sweeping the land, and there are rivals in all directions. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. If you believe there's some good in everyone, there's still hope for tomorrow. You'll unite the tribes and defeat the World Eaters to save the Tree of Life. He was hoping you'd join them. You understand that there's no harm in doing good to others. The Sifu was waiting for something to tip the balance in their favor, and with you by their side, he's confident you can unite the other tribes. The one you should coerce first is the Jagni tribe. The Jagni tribe may believe that fear and hatred will lead them to domination. A vanquisition of the tribes and destruction of the Tree of Life won't be the restart they want. It's just an end to everything. Their kin have run out of options and found themselves backed into a corner. Even those who desire peace have been forced to prepare for war. You need to take the struggle to the enemy, or the enemy will bring it to you. When survival is threatened, there's no other option left but war. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of.
He says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wong Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. You both have gentle minds, so they want to wage a gentle war. A war that bonds as much as it breaks. Tells you not to be afraid. Your fate cannot be taken from you. Claim the rival outposts and earn the right to wield the tribe weapon. Once you've dealt with the rival's outposts, you'll challenge their Sifu to unite their tribe with yours and let your kin share land again. They pass the point of no return as their words lost power and see no other way forward than using violence to combat violence. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. They're... He remembers... Anyway, the memories you make with your family are strong and can sometimes come to life. Even though it's not... So there we have a good old 45 minute chunk as the world opens up and you can start really getting down into all of the systems. Now here comes the World Eater. So look away now if you don't want to see it, but it is Jumbo Puff. And uh, this is an example of one of four spectacular boss fights that you uh, will encounter. Now there is a lot more spectacular than just these four, but they really are definite highlights. So yeah, I'd love to know what you guys are thinking so far from what you've seen. It's such a weird bubbling melting pot. Uh, these mutated creatures to slay, vehicle combat, a crafting system, mutation powers, psi powers, multiple styles of Wung Fu that you can upgrade across barehanded fighting and then six different weapons. Each weapon the speciality of one of the six different tribes engaged in a across the map, the huge exploration filled loot filled, secret filled, easter egg filled, character filled map and uh, then you could, you know, win the faction tribe war for one of the tribes. You can subdue the other tribes, ally them, exterminate them. There is a light and dark system. You make choices and it affects how you actually get on with things and how you're seen. There's an ultimate end goal. You can really change the state of the world. You can let destruction reign or you can be a hero of peace. It really is so much going on, even having these fort capturing territory flipping back and forth areas to capture. Like, it's just, oh, on top of all the quirky characters, the narrator is charming and really wonderful. Honestly, everything that's here is fantastic clay. My only qualm is that some of that clay has not been quite molded, perhaps as much as it should have been. Every idea that's in this game is stellar and at minimum functional. Quite a lot of it is really good and worth playing for. And again, the longer you play, the more it starts to click and the more you really get into it. My only thing is perhaps I think maybe less could be in it in order to enhance what remains but I do love how ambitious it is and it makes me really excited for what might happen in the future But I really don't want that to take away from how unique of an experience and world this ends up being And it really is just the definition of quirky in the most wonderful of ways and it really will stay with you There's moments galore where you're just like what why is that? I what was he doing? That doesn't make any sense What is things that are just weird happen, but you can't help yourself but falling for the game with every single one of them. 
So that's kind of my initial impressions and just as someone who is a fan of creatures it's worth playing and obviously you know that I am a fan of creatures. As I said, let me know what you think, like you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more and I will see you soon. A good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye